UiPath has just released its most exciting feature of this year, coded automation. And it basically means that you can use C-sharp to build robots in UiPath. Don't worry if you're not a C-sharp expert, neither am I, and the robot that we're gonna build in this tutorial is gonna be really simple. In order to use coded automation in UiPath, you need to have UiPath 23.6 installed. So just check your version, and if your version is 23.6, we can create a new process. Go to process, and if you have an older version, just make sure that you update UiPath. And let's create a new project, and let's call it coded automation. And make sure that you enable C Sharp instead of VB, because that's what we're gonna to use to code our automation. Then click on create. And now if you move your mouse to new, you should be able to see a coded workflow, a coded test case, and a coded source file. And those are the files that you can use in order to build coded workflows. There is still one thing that we need to do. So let's do that right now. Navigate to manage packages. And you have to ensure that the latest version has been installed for UiPath system.activities. And that version is 23.6. It could look a bit different on your machine than on mine, but at least it should be 23.6. For UiPath UI automations, you should also update to version 23.6. And the same goes for UiPath testing activities. Update it to version 23.6 and then click on save. I'm just going to close this window as I've already updated mine. Now there is one thing that we still need to do and that's downloading the sample application that we're going to use to automate in this video. In order to do that, I'm going to navigate to our website, which is rpa-unlimited.com. Then scroll below and click on navigate to the YouTube example applications and course material. And then this is the one you need. Download MyCRAM. And MyCRAM is the application that we're going to automate with guided automation. So click on download application. See that the download will start. We show in folder. Just going to extract it here. And then take MyCRAM.exe, copy it. And I'm going to store this one. You can store it on the desktop or in any other folder but it's a best practice to store it in the project itself. So now we get back to UiPath, then click on the main.xaml, and then click on open file location. Now you will be redirected to the actual project from UiPath. I'm just gonna paste my CRAM here, so you don't uh, by accident delete it from the desktop or something else. Let's go back to UiPath, and let's create a first c -sharp file in UiPath. So navigate to new, and I'm gonna go for a coded workflow because I'm not testing. So click on coded workflow. Let's give it a name for now. I'm just gonna keep the name workflow and I'm gonna click on create. And you will see that UiPath will create this file for us. By default, it's already logging hello from coded workflows. Just gonna remove this one, add some enters. And the way that coded automation works the best is if you use the object repository. So navigate to the right side of your iPad here uh, it can be that you still here on properties or in the data manager. Make sure that you navigate to the object repository, this one, and let's add this application to the object repositories. And we're going to do that by clicking here on the plus icon, um, application name, that's my CRM, and then click on create application. Now in this application, my CRM, I'm going to create a screen. So click on create screen. And let's just call this one main. And before we click on create screen, I'm going to say indicate screen. And before we click there, I'm going to open the application. So just open it, go back to UiPath and I click indicate screen. And we're just going to click here to indicate that this is the application and the screen that we want to automate. Now click on create screen. And in the next step, we can now also add the components of the screen. And if I go to the application, the flow that I want to automate is I'm going to fill in my first name, my last name. I also want to select the state. I'm not going to fill in the entire form because all of these fields are, they're just text fields, right? So they're, they're probably just going to be the same as first name and, and, and last name, but with different data. Um, so I'm going to fill those fields. I'm going to go to order, click on save, and then I'm also going to click on OK. And that way we've built our first coded automation. So navigate back to people and let's start with adding the fields to the object repository that we're going to use. So click here on main, right mouse click and then click on create element. And the first element that I want to capture is first name. I'm going to use a capital F and a capital N, but uh, name it however you want it. Just make sure that you keep this name because we are later going to use it in the coded workflow. 
and then indicate this element in the application. So the first name, that's this one. I will see the UI page just as normal. We'll create a selector and also an anchor. Click confirm. And then we can click on save and it's time for our next field. So click here again, create element, and let's call this one last name. Indicate elements. Just click here and click on confirm. Save it. And I want to add one uh, select element. So I'm going to go for the state, indicate elements, and then make sure that you click here and confirm and click on save. Okay, then let's add one more, create element. And the next element is gonna be the order uh, tab button. So I'm just gonna call this one order tab, indicate elements. I'm gonna indicate this one and confirm. Click on save. And then we're going to navigate to the actual order uh, tab. So click on order. And then we're going to add as well the save button to the object repository. So click create element. I'm just going to call this one save button. Indicate element. And then click here. And click on confirm. Click on save. Okay. And then for the next um, action, it's important that you actually click on save. Uh, and that way we can also capture the awk button. I'm going to add that one here. Create element. Awk button. Indicates. I just click here on awk. Click confirm. Click save. And just to make it a bit more difficult for UI, but let's close as well the actual application. And now let's start coding. Okay, so let's start with creating a first screen. Var screen is equal to UI automation. I see that when you start typing, you have to also start suggesting libraries to use. Dot. There are quite a few things that you can do with UI automation. You can attach, you can copy, um, etc. For now, I'm just going to open. And we always open a screen. We don't open an application. So the screen that I'm referring to is the main. So just type main here. And then let's just show that Everything that we have done until now is working. So go here and then click on run file to see if it actually makes sense what we have done. And as you could see, my CRM actually popped up. So this part of our first workflow worked really well. Let's continue. Okay, from now on, we can use screen like this and dot. And then we can do anything with the screen. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to type into type into and if you open a uh, parenthesis you can also see what you can do with this type into activity and what it expects in case of arguments so you see that the first thing it expects is the target answerable model and then it expects a string text so first it wants to know where to type and then it wants to know what to type so where to type that's first name and what to type i'm going to add thomas here but of course make sure to add your own name use semicolon and then I'm going to go to the next one, screen dot type into last name. My last name is Janssen. So I'm going to add that as well. Use semicolon and let's go to the next section. And that's the select. So I want to select a state. And if you open the MyCR application, you can see that by default, New York is selected. And I'm going to just change that to Washington. So let's close the application. Let's go back. Screen dot. And if we want to select an item, you, you see that you can just use select item. Um, use parenthesis and then you see a target and string item. So the first one is again the target, which is state. And the second one is the item, which is going to be Washington for now. And then use semicolon. Okay, so that's all the input that we want to provide to this sample application. Now let's also start with navigating. So I'm going to use screen dot click. And I want to click on order tab. And that's actually the only argument. As you can see, you also have click options where you probably can provide single click, double click, etc. 
but for now I'm just going to leave it like this. And then the next one is screen. Dot click. So after we've clicked on the tab, we're going to click on the save button. Let's just change it and close the application and let's run it again. Run file. Congratulations with building your first flow with Coded Automation. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, you would really help me if you could give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.